Hey guys, W1MSG here. It's been a bit, and I want to talk about is PyStar relevant in 2025? Well, you can bet it is. If you're just getting into uh, digital hotspots, you got to have PyStar. Um, it's been around since mainstream since 2017. Uh, I got involved with Andy back then. I was doing a lot of different videos on different types of setups, multiple networks, really getting in, in depth with it. But unfortunately, that uh, YouTube channel is gone. Um, <laughs> I was uh, working on some of my Google accounts and deleted one that was associated with that uh, YouTube channel, and it wiped that out as well. So we're starting fresh. Uh, W1MSG Radio on YouTube and uh, w1msgradio at gmail.com. So, here we are at the Pi Star website. And if you're just getting started, I am going to do a very brief DMR setup. Not going to get down in the weeds. I just want to show you how quick and easy it is to get this up and running. You can buy a hotspot from Amazon or eBay, any one of the little green boards, and they will work just fine on PyStar. First thing you need to do is you need to make sure you download the PyStar image. Uh, you can go to download PyStar. Uh, it's got two different versions here. Just grab the latest one, 17 February 2024. Click it and download it. While that's downloading, you can also go into the PyStar tools. Now, you want this to automatically get onto your Wi-Fi network. The easiest way to do that is to use the Wi-Fi builder, put in the SSID name of your router and the password to connect to your router. That will get you right on your Wi-Fi network. So, we've downloaded it. You need to write the image to a... SD card. Well, how do you do that? So for me, I use a program called Balina Etcher right here. And you're going to flash it from the file. This is the same thing for Windows. This program is available for Windows and for Mac. I'm on my Mac. Open the file. Make sure you select a target and make sure it's not one of your hard drives. Uh, that would not be good. And select it and then flash it. Now, this is going to go through. It's going to flash that image onto the micro SD card. Then it will verify it. Then what you'll have to do is remove it from the system, put it back in the system so it finds it, and you'll have uh, something that should say boot. Once you see that, the WPA supplicant.conf file that you downloaded from the Wi Fi builder, just drag and drop that right on that boot or put it in the root directory of the boot right here, and you should be all set. Then you can just eject it, put it in your Raspberry Pi, and you will be up and running. So, we're going to be up and running. We are going to go to your web browser. Now on a uh, on a Windows machine, you can type in pi-star backslash. It should connect right to your hotspot. On a Mac, it's Pi dash star dot local. It already came up, but there you go. Click it. Now it, it takes four or five minutes for this initial boot up because it does some uh, general maintenance on the system. No mode defined. It's going to ask you for a username. The username is pi dash star. Password is R A S P B E R Y. Boom, and we go into the configuration. So, 
you're going to go to this configuration page a couple of times here when you're first getting set up. The first thing you want to do, put your call sign in. Next, have a frequency that you're going to use. Uh, this will be green if it's a good frequency. It'll be red if not. This is just something I have programmed in my radios. You can put your latitude, longitude, your town, your locator, country. Uh, you can change the URL and have it go to a uh, specific website, <clears throat> whether it's private or public. You can also enable the uh, APRS if you wish to. We're just going to apply the changes. Like I said, down and dirty, quick DMR setup. So this is going to apply the changes I just made and then come back up. Okay, we get a warning that uh, we don't have a modem selected and we're going to take care of that momentarily. But the first thing we have to do is we have to turn on the DMR mode. Because as you can see, uh, that's one of the things you have to do. And we're also going to pick a radio modem. There's a ton of different radio modems on here. And I am looking for an MMDVM HS hat. This is uh, one of the biggest generic ones that's out there. So we're going to choose that for the modem. Um, the other thing, yeah, I do have a screen on here. I'll just type OLED 3 for now. Uh, that's beyond the scope of what I'm going to do on this. And we're going to apply changes. So now it knows the radio modem that you have and your call sign. And when we go back in, we'll have to put our DMR ID number and choose our Brandmeister or whatever uh, network you're going to use. And there's a bunch of them. So, uh, so D-Star setup, we need to put in our DMR ID. That's my DMR ID. Do not use that. Um, and if you go on the Brandmeister website under self-care, you can set up your hotspot security which I recommend so we're going to come down here I am going to change this and I'm going to stay on Brandmeister and uh, we're going to go to 3102 United States and my security password and everything else looks pretty good so let's apply the changes. And you can always go back in here. Uh, there's advanced editors. There's a lot of different things. You can have multiple networks, uh, DMR configurations on here. There's tons of stuff you can do. But I have found that 99% of the time it works right out of the box with a very basic setup. Let's go to the dashboard now that those settings have been set. And we can see that we've got a green DMR and a green DMR net. That means they're both connected and should be working. Um, I'm just going to grab a radio. I've got an old uh, Motorola 6550 DMR radio programmed up. So for the talk group, I'm just going to use the Parrot talk group. So what that allows me to do is do a test call and it repeats my audio back to me so I know if I'm getting through and it sounds good. So we'll just do a real quick test. This is W1MSG testing. One, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. W1MSG testing. So everything's green. This is W1MSG testing. One, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. W1MSG testing. 
and we had perfect audio coming back uh, from the parrot. So there you go. Uh, then all you need to do is you can program in your talk groups into your radio and just by changing the channel on your radio you key it up and it will connect to that talk group. Um, I've got Triangle NC on here so I just key that up and then it connects to that talk group. It's that simple. I was hoping maybe somebody would be on there and I'd hear something back. But no such luck. Anyway, that's it. Down and dirty and simple. Very easy to do. Uh, is it relevant in 2025? It sure is. Uh, one thing I did want to show you back in the configuration, there are tons of different uh, DMR networks, which is, I haven't been on in a long time, but when you pull down this list, you got DMR plus, um, free DMR in different countries. Bunch of them in the United States. FD, oops, H, I mean, just tons of stuff. Different countries. Quadnet, uh, First Coast, Tri State. So you could use any of those. I just chose to go with Brandmeister. It's about the easiest one, and it's what I've got set up right now. So, uh, stay tuned to the channel. I'm going to have a lot more stuff. I've been doing a lot on HF. Uh, I've got some HF recordings that I've been doing. I'll be doing some live streams from HF networks, uh, or nets, I should say, not networks. And um, I also got another project. I picked up a Hermes Light 2 SDR radio. So I'll be putting that together, getting that on the air, and I'll have some videos on that as well. Hey, if you like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit the thumbs up. Uh, hit the bell for notifications. It just helps all the algorithms, and uh, we'll see if we can't get this channel back up and running again. So hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. Have yourself a great day.